The left foot of a drummer plays two and four. The left hand of a drummer plays the groove, rise. What we do in La Pompe is a lot like the left side of a drummer. Our hands are sort of combining those two parts of accenting two and four subtly and keeping the groove. Now, the best thing I've ever heard about swing is walk the dog. Just the way it rolls off the tongue. Walk the dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk the dog. It's just the perfect swing groove. In Manouche kind of style, you really need to think about dog as one. It's dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk the dog. Very fast, dog, walk the 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 dog. It just really works, right? Dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk. Now, notice that the walk the walk is really the two and four. You would expect, and the way you the way you hear people play rhythm, a lot of times you expect two and four to be very, very forceful. They're not. They're subtle. And they have they're just snappy and short. It's much more like a wa than a da. Dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk the dog, walk. But it has, it has impact. So one, two, three, four, dog. Technically, what's happening here? I really need to get the muted sound of the groove without the chords before I even start involving the left hand. If you don't have this, you don't have shit. You need that. Somebody needs to be able to comfortably play music on top of you going like that. Even without those upstrokes, just the one. You're playing snare. Like snare with brushes, just holding time. That sort of exercise one. Now, how do you get that sound? The number one mistake I see with right hand playing is two and four slamming on the high strings. One and three sort of concentrate on the bass side, maybe the bottom three or four strings. And two and four are all the strings, but definitely include the bass strings. Something that I do is I sort of move a little bit forward automatically, especially in medium and slow tempos, just to create some separation in color. One and three are closer to the sound hole, two and four are closer to the bridge. But you don't want to slam into two and four. One, ta da do, ba da do, ba da it, it doesn't sound like jazz. That's some sort of, you know, crazy prog guy playing jazz. It's subtle. So downstrokes, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, after the two and four, you can start adding upstrokes. One. Now, you don't want to ever rotate your wrist for the upstroke. You don't want to go one. There's none of that. The upstroke. It's just dragging with the same exact angle back. You're not really doing anything you wouldn't be doing to include that upstroke rhythmically. It's in there, right? It's just that upstroke that's on the way to that one. Right? If I have one, two, three, four, one, two, and... I'm just dragging the pick on the way to that one. Not really thinking about creating a different rhythm, it's just right there. The next thing is adding the left hand. The left hand, this, I said, I said something else was the number one mistake, but this is also the number one mistake. A lot of things are the number one mistake. You have to pump every quarter note. The default is no pressure, just tracing the shape of a chord. And we're gonna take this C, six, nine shape. Now, this is an essential shape. I'll make a different video about all the shapes of the gypsy jazz chords, but this is an essential shape to know. The trick is not to press it 
with a hundred percent force to go all the way into the fret the way you would if you're playing like pop or bluegrass or something what you really want to do is just press it 80 percent down to where there's a little bit of percussion left in there meaning this is totally clean but again this is just being pumped so There's a little bit of like drumminess in there. It makes it sound a little bit snary when you don't press exactly all the way down. This is pressing too little. This is pressing too much. This is where you want it. It's just this kind of motion of tracing the shape and doing that, right? Now, Rhythmically, you want to play every quarter note. You never want to play in half time unless it's an embellishment. Half time meaning it's ten 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 ten. You also don't again with two and four. You don't want to accent the top of the chord. You don't want to go. That's horrible. You want to do this. Now with your time, you want to be very steady. You want to make it feel good. The real trick here is to connect to your inner dancer. I hate dancing. I don't mean that like you need to actually like dancing, but you got to imagine somebody dancing. You got to imagine somebody dancing because it's very easy to fuck with somebody dancing by messing up the music right if you're rushing you will see it in that pretend person you're imagining right if somebody has like some sort of groove going with their body and it just becomes goes from here to it's very noticeable if it's rushing or slowing down you have to have some sort of mental image of how you're making somebody move because then you'll notice when it's shifting right so for me, it's something I, I really feel it in my shoulders. And once I get in the trance, I can be pretty steady, even if it's a quick tempo. And if I'm spacing out and I forget to move and I forget to imagine somebody actually grooving to this, I can drift, I can get, it can get, it can rush, it can drag, it can do all these things, but it's a focus. And it's a type of focus where you really gotta be connected to some sort of motion, right? Or, it, or you're not gonna cut it, right? You're, you're going to rush and to drag. That's it for now. Hope this helps. Subscribe, like, ring the bell, leave a comment, join our Patreon. See you guys soon.